Oh, where the hell do I put the mic? Ah! All right, I'm Andre Minkov. I'm founder of Trademark Factory. And in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts about yet another trademarking screw up. This time around, it's Butlers in a Buff winning a trademark dispute against Bufflers. All right, let me read it from the article, and you can always find the link in the description below. Butlers in a Buff win trademark infringement case against Copycat. It's very unfair to our business, but also, and more importantly, to the general public who believe they are booking a genuine butler in the buff. Bristol's original mail order company has won a trademark infringement against a copycat company. Butlers in the Buff, which was created in 2001 and has seen a huge growth worldwide, now has a thousand men in its books who entertain semi-naked at events by making cocktails, serving nibbles, and playing party games. The brand has become a household name, however, its overwhelming success has meant the popular concept has been copied by a number of other businesses. Butlers in the Buff won a trademark infringement case in October against one such company, trading as Bufflers from Newquay and Plymouth, who offered a similar service. Butlers in a Buff launched legal action against the imitation company who they claim was using their trademark brand name without permission online, which reportedly caused confusion for clients looking for the original. A trademark infringement case was raised in August against the company's owner, Adam Davey, after Butlers in a Buff wrote to the company in 2017 to object to the use of its registered marks. But Butlers in a Buff claimed that they received a blasé, no complicit response. Following the legal action being taken, Bufflers were found to be unfairly taking advantage of Butlers in a Buff's reputation. In October, Butlers in a Buff settled out of court to restrict Bufflers or anyone on its behalf from infringing the registered trademarks by using the marks or similar on their marketing literature and on their website. Stacy Bramhall, director and partner at Butlers in the Buff, said we're pleased with the outcome and will continue to protect our brand against other infringers. We have worked very hard to build our business up to what it is today. We're very proud of our fantastic brand. It is not right that other companies try to confuse the public by trying to pass off as butlers in the buff. It is very unfair to our business, but also, and more importantly, to the general public who believe they are booking a genuine butler in the buff. Butlers in the buff takes trademark infringement very seriously and is dedicated to protecting the brand. All right, so you can finish reading it yourself, but there's a couple of things here. First of all, bufflers and butlers and the buff. Yeah, there is some similarity and uh, I can see why, you know, butlers and the buff were a little bit unhappy with bufflers uh, combining four words into one. Uh, so that the public could be confused. But there is a bigger issue here, uh, and that is what is Butlers in the Buff really trying to do, right? There is almost a doctrine of functionality that could come into play at some point because what are they doing? They are serving men to work at events semi-naked with a bow tie, and uh, they call them butlers in the buff. And uh, it's just a fancy way to describe what they really are. So the question is, when they file their trademark lawsuit, what did they want to do? What did they want to accomplish? Did they want to make them change their name? 
or were they trying to protect the underlying idea of sending those men to events? If it's just about the name, if they just didn't like the word bufflers and are perfectly okay with them doing exactly what they did, being the copycats, just under a completely different name, it's one thing. If they really wanted to actually stop them from running a competing business, it's completely different. And that's when genericness could come into play. This is when functionality could come into play. And uh, you have to be very careful when you're trying to use your trademark against competition when potentially you're not really going after their brands, you're going after their business. So again, this time around, they set a lot of core, they got what they wanted, good for them. And again, look, I am all for brand owners being able to protect their brand. All I'm saying is that they need to be careful in not overextending uh, the protection that they get with their trademarks. Now, if you found this video interesting, if you found it useful, subscribe now, get notified whenever the next video goes live. And if you got a brand that you want to protect, go to trademarkfactory.com, book a call with our strategy advisors, and uh, they'll be happy to help you get started. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bufflers, huh?